As INFJs, we often stay single longer and have more trouble finding a match than other personality types. But there are good reasons for this. Today, we're going to cover eight reasons why INFJs tend to stay single longer than other types. Number one, INFJs know what they want. INFJs have a clear vision of what they want in a relationship, like crystal clear. In fact, most INFJs could probably tell you that they have imagined the perfect partner. Unfortunately, that person doesn't exist. But let's be honest, INFJs are looking for deep and meaningful connections that align with their values and goals. INFJs don't want to sit around and talk about the latest celebrity gossip or the weather. Please, not the weather. To the INFJ, these things aren't worth our time because we want to engage in things that push the world forward. INFJs are solution-focused, and they like to philosophize on what would make their lives and the lives of others better. In fact, if you don't like these deep and meaningful conversations, then you likely wouldn't get along well with an INFJ. Number two, INFJs are looking for commitment. Yes, I mean long-term commitment. INFJs are not interested in dating everyone in town, and we aren't into casual flings. We take dating very seriously. Now, we'll cover this later, but INFJs like self-improvement, and that means building something meaningful. And it's the same way with a potential relationship. What is the point of dating someone if you know the relationship doesn't have a future? Number three, INFJs are cautious about entering a relationship. INFJs spend a lot of time reflecting on their own needs and desires. Now, this helps us to understand our own needs pretty well, but it also makes us cautious about getting into relationships. We need to be fully ready, and we also need to know that we are fully compatible with that person. I mean, we know we need someone intelligent. We know we need someone who's capable of seeing the big picture, but we also know how rare that is. Us INFJs, we're kind of all or nothing, so we want to make sure you match up with us before we go all in on the relationship. I think this is one of the reasons the INFJ can fall for narcissists. The narcissist mirrors the INFJ's interests, their behaviors, their values, and their emotions at the beginning of the relationship, and that can make the INFJ think that they've finally found someone who's interested in the same things that they are. But it's a trap. It's a trap! I've actually already covered the topic of narcissists pretty deeply in another video, so I'll link that in the description below. Number four, INFJs practice selective socializing. INFJs almost always prefer meaningful interactions over casual socializing. Actually, we pretty much hate casual socializing. I mean, what's the purpose of this shindig anyway? Because of that, we're probably going to avoid large social gatherings, and we're probably not going to be frequenting the places that might give us more dating opportunities. And this can actually limit our potential chances to meet someone. But let's be honest, what are the odds that another INFJ is at one of these social engagements anyway? Maybe you could try standing by the exit and see if you find someone who's trying to escape. That might be an INFJ. So that raises the question, how do two people with some real hermit-like tendencies find each other? The answer is, it just doesn't happen that often. So lack of opportunity is a real thing here when it comes to meeting a potential partner. And because INFJs don't like to settle, they can remain single for a long time waiting to meet someone who is compatible with them. I'm sure you've had friends who do not wait at all to meet someone who's compatible with them. They just go out with people over and over all the time. That's not what the INFJ does. If this video is helping you, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the INFJ circle. Number five, INFJs need authenticity. INFJs, they value authenticity and depth in their relationships. INFJs are not interested in superficial connections, and we do not like hypocrites. If you're someone who's playing a part out in society, and you're being inauthentic, an INFJ is going to spot that a mile away. And to be honest, nothing disgusts an INFJ more than someone who's putting on a show and being inauthentic. I mean, we actually feel pity. We actually feel embarrassment for those types of people. And those two feelings are not the feelings you build a relationship on. Personally, I think this is one of the things that turns INFJs off about social media. We can see that everyone's being so fake. And we know that their lives aren't like what they project on social. Anyway, it's our desire for genuine connection and our complete revulsion to fakeness and hypocrisy that can result in a longer search for the right partner. Number six, INFJs focus on personal growth. As INFJs, we often prioritize personal growth and self-improvement. In other words, we like to learn. You'd be hard-pressed to find an INFJ who doesn't like to read or listen to audiobooks or 
listen to podcasts or watch educational YouTube videos. And as an INFJ, you might think that these behaviors are normal, that everybody watches educational YouTube and listens to audiobooks and reads, but it's not normal. The truth is that most other types do not like to learn. That's why entertainment and distractions and social media is so prominent in our society today. In fact, learning and self-development is often these other types' least favorite thing to do. It just reminds them of what they don't know, and that upsets them instead of exciting them like it does us INFJs. To quote a line from one of my favorite Jim Henson Christmas movies, they don't like to learn, but they hate what they don't understand. So when the INFJ shares a story about what they've read or learned recently, most other types will not like it. In fact, they might even get mad and act like you're arrogant for saying you actually read something. The nerve. But back to INFJ needs. INFJs need to feel seen, and they need to be with someone who will make them feel that way. They need someone who will understand their big picture thinking and their love for learning new things. Emphasis there on the word understand. We must have someone who understands us. INFJs do not need someone who's jealous of their abilities. They need someone who will support them. So an INFJ is usually going to be attracted to someone who shares their enthusiasm for knowledge and who understands their hunger for it. Number seven, INFJs have a high sensitivity to social dynamics. What does that mean? INFJs are highly sensitive to the social dynamics of relationships, and that makes them more aware of potential issues or conflicts than other types. In other words, we can tell if a potential partner has some issues going on in their lives or if there's a potential problem on the horizon. Let me give you an example. Let's say we visit a potential partner's parents and this person is absolutely rude to their mom. If that's the case, then we are 100% going to notice that. Same thing with a server at a restaurant or an Uber driver or anyone that that person is interacting with. This kind of behavior is going to become a red flag to the INFJ, and it will seriously reduce the chances of the INFJ staying with that person. Now, it's not that we expect others to be perfect, but we can connect the dots and see the big picture. We know that if you're treating your mom or a server or an Uber driver like that, you're probably going to treat us like that in the future. It's an involuntary connection that forms in our minds. And since we really enjoy being alone anyway, we're likely to leave you in the dust and go back to our room and continue reading The Lord of the Rings. Get out of here, Smeagol. Regardless, this social sensitivity can lead INFJs to be cautious about entering a relationship, especially if we sense that that relationship is going to go against our value system. Number eight, INFJs have to see if you will accept them. Opening up to someone can be very challenging for us INFJs because of our deep emotional complexity. That's an understatement. Personally, I'm not opening up to someone until they earn it. I'll tell you that much. And that's because, as INFJs, we know what it's like to be rejected countless times for our unique perspectives and interests. You know what it's like to be misunderstood, and you know what it's like not to be fully appreciated. So a potential partner is going to have to be patient and prove to the INFJ that they not only understand them, but that they actually enjoy our unique perspectives. They're going to have to take our ideas and our thoughts seriously and not belittle us for seeing things in our own way. And as stated, it takes a while for the INFJ to fully trust that a person is not going to turn on them and act like they're crazy. And nothing will turn an INFJ off more than acting like they're crazy or delusional. That's just asking for a door slam. Anyway, all of these issues combined can lead us INFJs to delay or even avoid romantic relationships. While these eight things might contribute to INFJs going through a longer period of being single, they also mean that when an INFJ does enter a relationship, they are going to be a super dedicated partner. And hey, if an INFJ does decide to stay single forever, then great. Marriage isn't for everyone, regardless of the pressures society tries to place on you. I'm single myself, and while I'm not saying it's an impossibility, I currently have no intention of ever getting married. So my advice, never feel down about yourself because you're single or because you're outside the norm. The truth is that you're an INFJ, and that means you're unique. And part of that uniqueness is that you're not as reliant on social interactions as most other people. As INFJs, we're pretty much fine with being alone. And that ability is so rare that it actually intimidates other types. Seriously, it freaks them out. And if you'd like to know even more reasons why the INFJ is the most intimidating personality type, watch this video next.